God before coming to us. That doesn't mean that we don't care that you don't behave. You have to behave. There's ethical codes. The, the Kafu has 16 ethical codes. It's the same ones you find in every other religion. The golden rule applies. You can't get away with it. Karma still exists for us. But this is really truly the meaning of life. Alisha Nifa, theological point of view. Only our internal deity or soul knows our destiny. And we call it Ori. The Nigerians and the African Nifa call it Ori. The most powerful deity. Even more powerful than Chango would be for me or any other Ori. Ori, without Ori's that, uh, permission, it doesn't happen. If I try to do something that is not within my destiny, I would experience hardship. I would experience obstacles. I would experience sadness. I would experience lack of satisfaction in my life. Usually when you see people that seem to be stagnated and they, they don't know what they're doing, I'm not happy here. I don't want to be in the city. I hate this relationship. That, if we've all met people like that. It is very likely that they're on the wrong path. And they need a divination with them so that they can figure out what exactly what they're doing wrong so that they can modify their behavior, make some life changes, and perform a goal so that good fortune starts to come their way and they can align onto the path that we're supposed to. And I can tell you that as soon as I became a Baba it was hard. But my, and she, can, she knows my life as my, my partner. Hey, my life has become extremely, especially after meeting, especially after meeting, I mean, it, it was almost like a, cl a crank went shook. And everything just working. Good job, good relationship with stability, happiness, a lot of music, a lot of money came. Everything just at the same time. It was almost extremely. And she knew we were going to top over. <laughs> I was very poor. <laughs> she knew me when I was poor. And it was just, and she can, even to this day, it's just almost miraculous. The only thing I can explain to me is how it process in many poems. Once the, per the corrected vote was performed, the correct was done. Both boy and arrived to the person. All the ideas arrived to the person's life. And that's exactly what's happening. So that's the beginning of life for us. Our guiding Orisha is there to help us. Shako is there to help us. And Alumila exists to reveal that destiny to us, which we lose at birth, and there's a reason for that. It also maybe, uh, explains the story of how Elenini, the deity of infortune, uh, swore that she would affect all the children that came to this earth that were born, right before you're born. Elenini whips you in the back. The pain is so incredible that you forget your destiny. That pain and that marking is the spinal cord that we have in the theologic point of view. I mean, that, that's how they explain the theology, mythology as well. But we forget who we are. And the other way to remember what our destiny was, was to divine relief. And to go to the man of the Urula to actually find out what our guy in Odu was, what was our destiny. Uh, through divination, one destiny and specific sacrifices are revealed, which leads to the most abundant, happy, obstacle free life we can live. All ceremonies in the faith are related to that and prescribed by divination. Everyone doesn't have the same destiny or doesn't even need to have to initiate. I mean, for the, at the end of the day, we are the, the fifth or sixth largest religion in the world. All, all the Yifa, for the and What about all the other people who are not the other faiths? They're not saved, they're not going to go there. Maybe it's, maybe it's not their destiny in this faith, in this life to be in, in this particular faith. And that's okay. If I always just with the other religions completely tranquil, it doesn't have that problem. Of, hey, you know, can I speak to you? We have five minutes to speak about <laughs> about the matter. We're not going to be knocking on your door. About <laughs> well, I'll tell a funny story about that because we've had a lot of them come to my house, and I've done my practical yeah. jokes. <laughs> All right. So, what is divination? The Ifa faith distinguishes itself from some of the more common faiths by its practice of divination, either divination by an Olorisha, which is done with Karakol, or divination with a Babalao, which is done with these elements over here. And I'm going to take the moment around to show them. This is the open. This is the servant of Arumila. One of the stories, he became a servant of Arumila, and condemned to serve him as well. So essentially, we transmit information from Earth back to Heaven, from Heaven back to Earth to the open. If you can see, this is just a, a particular plant. I don't know the actual, the actual scientific nomenclature for it, but if you, when you see them together, they look a little bit like that together, so they're supposed to be like that. When they're cut in half, they naturally open up to a side that's a hard shell on the outside and the inside. So Ifan works in the way that you simply cast it. If I was to cast this, that's a sign already. There's a black, white, 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 black, you know, wait, 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 that's Obunda Masa. Funny enough, the story behind that Obunda Masa, in union there's force. It's a way of Orumila saying, the way we're uniting and informing everybody and educating about this. Always, Orumila is always speaking, no matter when you cast it, even the slightest divination. 
you can get something out of it. For whatever reason, that's what came up to my mind when I saw the fight. The story of the of the two brothers, Obu and Ochozi. That's where Obu and Ochozi learn how to work together. That's why they live together in Kaogun. Mm -hmm. Ogun was a really strong, you know, warrior. He's the god of war. You know, he's like Ares, that type of thing. And yeah. he was cutting through the forest. But every time he would cut to a forest to get to an animal, the animal already heard him coming. He couldn't get the food. Ochozi was the master hunter. He get them away from uh, from a bow and arrow from a mile away. But he couldn't cut to the forest. They came to a pack together. You kill them, and I'll cut our path to them. And that's why Ogun and Ochozi from that day on have always worked and lived together. At least the Cuban tradition. I'm not truly sure if in the Nigerian tradition they do, because I think in the Nigerian tradition, if you're a child of Ogun, you get Ogun, and that's it. You don't necessarily have to get Ochozi. In some regions, Ochozi doesn't even exist. Ochozi is just another path of Ogun. As, as, as I understand from the books of Ayatollah. In Brazil, there are a lot of people initiated to Ochozi. That's it. Hello, man. Come in. When we get knife, which is the next level mm -hmm. of the priesthood, most people get full Ochozi, and you still keep the one that's with Ochozi. Exactly. And do you get the uh, the shiriki for those things? So uh, the, uh, the different uh, Oshosi is usually represented as a as a crossbow, mm -hmm. at least in the Cuban like tradition. That. Yeah, like little, really small, just pointing, showing a little arrow. Yeah. I mean, if you go if you go to a particular Santero or Babalao's house and you see a cauldron, usually they're at the front door because Eshu lives at the front door of the house. If you go into the Babalao's house and you see Eshu, you're gonna see a woman children next to him. You see a little like like you know witchcraft pot, cauldron around the side, and inside. Uh, you see elements and metal objects usually related to a moon because a moon is everything metal. Industry, nothing in the earth would have existed behind the theology if a moon didn't work for it. We would have that sword, we would have guns, we have the power, we would have machines, we would have the industrial revolution, we wouldn't be able to. The most, since the first moment that a human being tried to break two stones together, that's a moon that's aggressive force. A moon is also aggressivity, everything to violence. Create creative violence, it also can be destructive mm -hmm. violence. So, moon is all of it. Okay, so we, you know, Babalaos use this as a divination tool. We cast it, and there's a sign. The sign will explain a whole bunch of stories, or uh, fables, or poems that we find in the Nigerian tradition, which will explain in some way the situation of the person who is born. Okay. Communication with Ra is considered supreme and more detailed because only Orumila saw the creation of the universe alongside God, alongside Olodumar. Thus, he was condemned by Olodumar to provide human beings with the method to discover their destiny, as I was saying. Divination is an integral part of the faith. Practitioners get regularly divine with a priest to ascertain how they're living and to figure out solutions to problems in their life like poverty, sickness, tragedies, finding a good name, should I move here, should I move not do that, etc. And these are different type of divinations. Here we have an Olodisha, doing a Karakor divination, and I stay up with Ron, Konka, Karija, and the circle which wants to have the this is a Nigerian Paola, uh, divining here on a mat. He's sitting on a straw mat, but he has a particular divination uh, cloth where he does, does the opening divination. And then this is Ifa divination as well, but this is called Iki divination, or Diki, Rafa divination with the Iki. It's much more cumbersome because with an Iki divination, you know, you might have to do four or five graphs before you can mark one sign, and only one of those signs will be one of these shells. So just to get this sign, it might take me five minutes. Again, I got the sign. But then open it, you just cast it and you got it in less than two seconds. So open the divination is a lot more faster and more utilitarian. However, when there is a very deep issue that needs to be informed, a person's lifetime, or should I marry this person? Really important decisions. You go to the Father Divination. You don't want to fail. The Father Divination with the king is communicating directly with Orumi. Because Orumi is represented with a set of seeds that come from the open tree, which is a particular palm tree. They look like little black seeds. So when you sound the five, they call it, magically put in this process, you grab your king seeds, you'll have uh, 16 in your hand, representing the 16 major signs. You grab it, if there's two left in your hand, you mark a one on the, on the you can see one, two signs. You mark a one there. A one is the equal of the light sign. If you grasp again, and you get one left in your hand, you get marked two. It's a binary system. The two will be the dark sign. As you, if you mark any other ones, you do it again. It doesn't matter. So it's do it again, do it again, do it again. Oh, and one. Boom, boom, boom. So you get all the signs. And once you've had eight markings, you have yourself a sign. If I has responded to the particular question. If you're going to ask a particular question, you have to do it twice. You have to do one set of signs and then another set of signs. If the first sign was higher in ranking, Yofe or Yekum, Yodi, Yodi, there's a ranking all the way to Ofum. It was higher than the second one, 
he found naturally with this. If the second one was higher, it's a plus saying no. So if I ask if I should marry this particular woman and the second son was higher, he's saying no. And true about allows, well, yeah, as much as they may like the girl, they say no. I know a lot about this, I love this girl, but plus it's not lost my destiny. And they're so faithful to their faith, they say they don't do it. And they usually make the right decision. I haven't met one that has made a bad decision. Because a Ruby has already foreseen maybe three years down the line something horrible is going to happen. Maybe she's going to get sick and maybe go for tragedy. Maybe she's going to leave you for another guy. You never know what it's going to be. But if I already warn you about a particular situation, don't do it. And that's why divination is done. This particular divination doesn't happen too often on the human side. I mean, some Babalas will do it for themselves often. But most of the younger ones will not. Maybe have laziness. But for a major ceremony, oh yeah, you can't do a ceremony of initiation and, and do open to, say, to take a, you know, you have, you have to sit down and do the event process. Okay, so what type of divinations are there? There's two types of divinations. There's regular divination that is performed to ascertain solutions to problems or receive, receive guidance from regular affairs. These last 21 to 28 days, the actual time one is living changes in that time. So you have, you do the divination and you usually have about a week to two weeks. I would recommend most all of them a week to perform the avoid somewhat so that you can have the positive things come into your life. If it's saying you're gonna get a new job or an ascension in your job, do the above and do it early. So that maybe four or five days later you get that call from your boss, hey we've considered you for the job and you go, How did that happen? I didn't think I had a chance. They picked me. Yeah, yeah well we know how Eshu. You did a bow and Eshu made it happen. And I've had that happen many times. I have a friend, who I'm not gonna name in particular, who was they didn't have a job. She was running out of her funds. She was depleting all her funds. Uh, she was even raiding her, her retirement accounts, and I was very sad to see that. She's not in my age. She's not a person that's a big believer in any faith, but she was. Uh, she is atheist. Yeah. Uh, she uh, was very desperate, and she had known that I helped other people, and she had seen me in action with two of her friends that she brought to the house. But she was just observing. But she was like, "Yeah, you, you think you can do some of that?" You know, hocus pocus magic on me, and she was joking around it, but she was serious. She was going to some other platform. And I did a bow for her. And about a month later, she got three or four job offers. She became a principal at a very good school. She's extremely happy. This had the same thing with my, I'm going to name my brother into this presentation. He was having trouble finding a home. So I do a bow for him. A month later, he got the home, home of his dreams. Beautiful home in, 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 in Belcher Town. A lot of space. I mean, the home they these type of stories. I've divined over 150 clients in Puerto Rico and here from Havana. I've done it. I've done it here in New York and other places. I can tell you many stories of people who are about to lose their house because they didn't have enough rent or something. I've done it over ten dollars. A week later, they somehow managed to find a maybe a subsidy program that saves them from getting lost. You know, small things like that. Of course, they have to modify the behavior. I also have stories of people who didn't vote, but they didn't change their behavior, and therefore they didn't. You know, they didn't have the results that they wanted. So far, thank God I haven't had anybody talking about going, hey, you robbed me, you know, I made certain money to do something and it didn't work. And I am very ethical about that. I worry about that. I call my clients a week or two days. Have you seen any effects? I, I worry about it first. Okay, so the next one is the life divination. These are for a major ceremony, like Manalula, Yogosha, or a Babalao's consecration. These describe the life destiny, tendencies, problems, benefits, and solutions of a person's entire life. I'm going to make you guys laugh. My sign is Obeate. Obeate is that the tongue lost the head. Does that sound like somebody you guys know? <laughs> I'm kind of loquacious. No, I speak a lot. <laughs> and, 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 you, and you probably know more than that, that it was my tongue who got me in trouble. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and if I doesn't fail, my sign also talks about neurologic problems. In my, uh, in my um, particular sign, there was a battle between the brain and the cerebellum. And while they were battling, the body was in disarray. All people were falling for having seizures. I'm not collecting. The Baba Laos in Cuba had no idea about that. They just simply said, oh, Beate, you can't put him on the cover. So, do you have problems in your head? I said, yeah, I have epilepsy. Ah, the battle between the brain and the cerebellum. That, that, that's when they all, yeah. you know, like what we were talking about. You know, they, all, they all like congratulate each other. Ah, I told you. Okay, you know, because they, they got it right. These are elder Baba Laos. They've been doing this for 30, 40 years. These are men who sadly don't have uh, particular prosperous life. They're very poor, they live in the neighborhoods of Marina, Havana, but they do, want to, they do know one thing where they do. They do nothing but it. They memorize these stories like that. So, if I never fail, in my experience, I don't know how it works. So don't ask me. I don't know if this is some incredible, you know, I just don't know. I don't know. It, the only way to explain it is God. 
but it doesn't fail. I've had people come to my home, and I tell them exactly what it is, and they start crying. Your life has been like this, this, this. Sometimes you have problems with your parents because of this, 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 and they start crying because I tell them exactly what is wrong. So it's not me. This is the divination system, and it doesn't fail. So life divination is done with, like I said, atefa. They come with that sign, and you can find out the problems and the benefits, how to solve a lot of these issues. Not only tell you, well, this is your problem, there's medicine for it. There's actually an Ebola, I was actually reading it the other day. There's an Ebola for, uh, what do you call it, um, for my epilepsy, for fixing my epilepsy. It's arrogación de cabeza with cuero de toro. Look, the, the front parts of the toro, you know, the, the foot, take the, 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 the dead skin, once the skin, they just cut the skin off, put it in my cabeza, it's una arrogación de cabeza, un poco bolito, por eso. Now it's expensive, where am I gonna get a bull <laughs> to do it? I have to go to Cuba where it's a little bit cheaper to do that, and even then it's hard because Cuba, you kill a cow, it's it's difficult. They don't have a lot of meat, it's bien difícil. You know, unless I can say I'm Yuma and bribe somebody, this is very, very hard to do. But there is a both for all types of things. If I if I really want to do it, I'm sure I can get some people in Miami to find this stuff. There's always but there's a medicine for any type of problem. In my case, my epilepsy, there's one there. There is an emboino beate, I can memorize, for women in domestic situations, the abuse situations. Because an beate is the story, and I get that a lot. A lot of my clients are females. Obeate is the award that saved a lot of women. The women would flock to him to say, oh, they, they deliver the saying the same of the sign is, Obeate siempre hace algo para comer. So in my life, I'm always going to have a lot of women, especially in very disturbed situations, that she knows. Oh, yeah. We have some recent clients who are literally living on Section 8, suffering, doing, you know, doing the nastiest stuff to be able to survive, sadly. And, they, and, we, and I have to help them. They've come to my home, asking for help, I'll move my house, my children, what am I going to do, etc. And when I see people like that, if I, they can't afford the particular fee, which I usually charge, if I have to do it both for $15, $20, I'll do it. It's my mandate, it's my juramento I have to do it to help them. So in this I, in El Beate, there's a story of two tribes. There was a male tribe and a female tribe. The male tribe was aggressive, the female tribe was pacifist. The male tribe asked the pacifist tribe, you better give us tribute or we're gonna destroy your village. And they didn't have any way to give them tribute, so they flocked over their room and the this man walking through the forest. And they flocked and threw themselves at his feet and said, save us, we're about to get hurt by the, the aggressive village, what are we gonna do? Oro Mila did what he always does, does in all the signs. He doesn't know, I mean, he's wise, but he doesn't know things. He consults Tifa, he took out his seat, Divinely Father, he saw that, he said, you need to give a hen, Cruega, Magalina Cruega. Give a Magalina Cruega to the river, to Oshun. Oshun will take care of it, but you need to give it to her. So he, they did, and when they give the hen, the river became angry, because she's the deity of the river, Oshun. Mm -hmm. Became angry <coughs> of the abuses that were happening, and went over and destroyed over the male village, completely drowned the male village. It's interpretive, it's mythology. It means that the person, in my opinion, the woman is in a domestic abuse situation. There's a male tribe, there's somebody aggressively attacking her. And she needs to appreciate Oshu so that something's going to happen that's going to give them an hour to escape. Hey, I will have our attack, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> she'll find a way to move out. A friend will come and say, no, you can live with me. Whatever it is, there's going to be a solution that will present itself so the person can leave. And in order for that to happen, the person has to offer a hand to Oshu. So there's an abo, a specific abo, for my son, for that particular situation. And that's across all the signs. If I can, can find a solution to pretty much any problem that we could possibly imagine, including in some cases, I've had friends of mine who cure people of, uh, of major diseases. We have a, a, a per person in common who was born with a congenital heart condition. There's no way to fix it. They did Santo, and the heart was completely cured. The doctors could, the Western Puerto Rican doctors couldn't believe it. They came a week later after doing the ceremony. To look at, this is a new heart. This is a totally different heart. It's not what was in the. They made the person have to take another X-ray because they couldn't believe it. And the same X-ray came out. They're healthy now. So there is something here that we cannot explain. I guess that's one of the reasons why I got interested into the faith because as a scientific, intellectual, academic, prove it to me. I need to have something scientific method. The Saint Yamelo. I need some explanation, but we can't. But the results are there, and I've seen this in my personal practice many times. In my own personal practice. All right, how are we doing on time? I do, you know, we're still doing okay, but I want to give people the time to actually ask the questions they want to do. So I'm going to skip over this one. I already talked a little about it. That's a depiction, you know, kind of like artistic depiction. That's not thing I want to talk about. Ifa doesn't have really a lot of problems with artistic depiction. In the Nigerian side, you see a lot of beautiful carvings. 
a lot of woodwork, a lot of uh, what called jar and pottery, etc. So and, uh, you, you're also getting paintings as well as, as they progress, but because Nigerian villages tend to be still more poor than the Cuban and, and the diaspora, you don't see a lot of the of, of, you know European style paintings like this. Kind of thing. It's more of a human fiction of Olodumare, Orumina, divining what looks to be a homemade, in the sign of homemade. This is uh, called the Dua, or in her female form, because the, the Dua in other, in other situations is, is, is put as a male thing. It depends on where you go, even in Nigeria. And Obata, the daily of uh, which you mentioned. Obatara is kind of like the theme of the council. Think, think of him as a Zeus. I mean, there's, this is God. He's above all the other ones. But if there was a king, a representative for him, in the Orisha council, it's him. It's Obata. So Obatara and the Dua are two of the higher Orishas in hand beyond. And then Arumina, of course, being in the center because he is the indicator of the line. He's the second to God. And he's, at that moment, he irradiated by Arumina's energy and he's divine of Umeni. So the energy of Umeni is in the Of Umeni is an extremely important sign. It was actually supposed to be the first sign of Ifa. But because Iyobe, the lesser one, went first, he became the first. It switched around. Of Umeni is supposed to be the first one. Okay, so the breakdown of Ifa's creation, Olodumare, the all-powerful creator. So Olodumare contains all of the Ashe or the divine energy of creation while God exists. He is so powerful and incomprehensible by humans that he does not directly relate to us. So you won't see very much uh, practitioners in the faith actually having an altar and saying, Mira, Dios mío, you won't see that a lot. You could, you could technically do it, but it's, he's not listening, and not, not in a bad way. He's, he's, he's too important. He's doing dealing with the universe right now. He has appointed orishas to deal with different parts of creation here, so we relate with the orishas and to our ori. Our ori is a manifestation of God within ourselves. You guys have heard the terminology of the divine within each other. That's it. The, this conception we see it across cultures. We see it with the Chinese or the Dantians at the different points. We see it with the chakras. We see it with uh, Reiki. We see it in different traditions. The idea that there's energy and the and, and the third eye. Some people have talked about that. That idea is across different cultures. If I is not any different. Ori, our eternal head deity, is that connection, that direct connection with heaven, with God. It's a part of the divine of God within ourselves. And every Orisha, in some way or another, is an extension of the energy of God. So God is in everything at least in our conception. The Orishas are deities made by God to govern different aspects of creation. They are directly tasked to relate to human beings as human beings relate with nature. Each of them has their own province. So Osain governs the, 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 the forest. Yemaya, <laughs> at least in Nigerian tradition, is a river deity. But in the Afro-Cuban tradition, she is the, at least the, the water, the, the, the shore, the shore waters. She is the sea right there. Olokun is really the owner of the deep seas. Um, Chango is the owner of thunderbolts, fire, and um, the idea of dancing and music. So every, everything in, in nature, everything in human creation, in some way or another, there's no Risha behind it. There's one that governs that. The egg, this is the this is an order. So Olokun is on top. Orishas is for higher energy, to vibrate at a higher astral energy. And then come Ekumu, the ancestor spirit. She lives who once lived and passed away. Grandpa, grandma. Uh, my good friend Jim, you know, whatever. All the ancestors, anybody that we put in all the photos, that we pray to them, they can actually affect change for a person. In some cases, the bow are performed to a kumbu, and can have miraculous results. A kumbu could be the ones to, in some signs, for example, Obeate, it's extremely important to propitiate a kumbu. Obeate has spirits of prosperity that he does not know about. It is said in one of the verses that we find in Popola's books, in Eshifai and Obeate, that Obeate should always smoke tobacco whenever he does the ceremonies, because he has these prosperity spirits that love the smell of tobacco. And every time they smell it, they come around them and reach a star in his life. But he didn't know that. In the stories, he didn't know that. He didn't understand why he was so poor. And if I said, smoke tobacco, do it. Because he had spirits that were always around him. So in my case, in my own side, spirits are important. Every time I do a boy at home, I always take a cigar and start puffing a few times. Not because I really like it. On the contrary, I always fear I'm going to get cancer out of it, mouth cancer out of it. But because my spirits, my particular astral energy, and this earth has these spirits that are around, so Egungum are important. Egungum is the way the Nigerians call it. Egungum is the way Cuban might say it. And then, of course, living. We're on the bottom rung, at least. Our, we are here still proving our purpose. We're not, we haven't completed our mission. And if we don't complete it in this life, we do reincarnate. That, process, that also is a part of Kifa. Just like it is for Buddhists or for other religions. Okay, 
So, questions so far? Anybody? Go ahead. Um, you said that for some of the people that have to ask you for help, that they have to stop something. For example, is it like, is it like you have to stop wearing red or you have to stop? Sometimes it could be something as silly as that, and, and people don't believe it. There was a book by Leonel Gomez uh, about Ewo, about the taboo and the signs. And in one of the taboos, I think it was in Oyekumeji, in that, in that verse, one of the verses of Oyekumeji, the boa constrictor was told never to sweep the leaves at the front door of her house. And what did she do? She swept the, the leaves, and of course, her prosperity would never materialize in her life. Once she stopped allowing that and allowed the trees to essentially just, you know, throw what was happening right now, fall, and have the leaves fall in her front door, meaning the grass under her tree, etc. prosperity started on your life. Something as stupid as, as that sometimes literally can be it. It's not because of anything we materially see. It's because of astral forces that we do not see. So sometimes uh, there's signs that tell you to wear all white, ikashe. Ikashe tells us of the battle between cotton, between the red palm oil, and between olofim. And then that what battle, the one that won out was cotton. So therefore, if you want to win battles in those particular 21 or 28 days, whatever it may be, in your job, in your life, etc., wear white. Because you want to be like the cotton in that story. So sometimes something that's that's what we consider silly as wearing certain type of clothing. It does matter. Mm -hmm. Or don't go to a funeral and take a look and look at the uh, dead because you could be affected. Some people are particularly sensitive to uh, the influence of their spirits. And what we might consider consider that when you go walking around. But when you consider a person talking to themselves around there, they might be affected by echo. They, we don't know. I've had people who have come to my house. You know, I've had a good friend who came to my house recently. And I've never heard them. Some of us even know him, because I think you guys probably know him. A, a good friend of mine came to my house. You know, he's not particularly, not an atheist. He's a little bit of agnostic. Like, agnostic, like, we believe there's something out there, we just don't know about it or something like that. I guess that's the question. So he comes to my house, and he's just talking in a suicidal language. Like, I have an AMO. I think my life is complete. Like, I, I just, I don't, I've been feeling sick for the last four months, and they can't figure out what it is. I'm getting kidding. Coming out of the blue. I don't know why I'm feeling this way, okay, you know, but I've been barely calm about it. I'm ready to go. He's only like 50. Well, why are you talking in this way? And he has no reason to be this way. His life is extremely abundant and fine. I didn't understand it. I brought Sophia to see him. There was none. I divine with Ifa. There was a story there that talked about a poison in a river. And he was coming with a prophecy of Ogubulubu, which means bushcraft. Affected. So I said, okay, what you're feeling is not normal. You are affected by something. We're going to check it out. Let's do the abo of that sign. I think it was like a booster in a hand or something like that. Like the, the cleansing, what's called a sarayeji, which they pass a, a, a rooster essentially to the body like this. Singing a song. They did the cleansing. I did it in the bowl of Taurero. Three, day, three weeks later, he was happy. I made up as when he gives me a hug, but I don't know what's happening. I feel great in the world. I don't feel, I don't know what I was thinking. And he figured out that there's a woman that was kind of harassing him a lot. He's married, and she was harassing him a lot, coming up to his house a lot. And she ended up with kidney stones. He had two kidney stones, she had 60 kidney stones. That's the law of karma. Whatever you decide on somebody affects you by two times. So we figured out that we thought that's that was it. That was the source of it. To this day, he's okay. It does happen, so you know the effects of echo in spirits can affect. I don't know if it was an echo in that particular situation, but something was affecting his judgment because I know this person. I've known this person since I was nine years old. This person is very stable, very good thinking. He's a person with a master's degree. You can't fool this guy. He's stable in his life. He's you know financially great, happy in his home life, beautiful children. There's no reason for him saying I'm complete. I want to die. There's no reason for that. And. I don't know. I don't know what I did. What Ifa told me, Ifa says, offer size this, 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 and I bought out there. We'll see what happens. I've had this happen so many times. Where I don't know what happens, but it just happens. It works. It's not that we're magicians. We are trained in certain rituals to do certain things. These are different pictures of, you know, like I said, Omo and Yang Cuba. This is actually a fundamental. You can tell the difference between an avericula. And a fundamental, because usually fundamentals are tied with either rope or a particular, it used to be back in the day, a particular tree-like thing that would be like a rope. It wasn't string. It had to be all natural. So the fundamentals look very much like that. If you see anything, metal, this, any type of modern stuff, it's not a fundamental. Fundamentals cannot be made with metal objects. 
as we need with you know stretching. Sometimes they put a fire next to it to try to stretch the skin before they play it. You can, you'll see them between the songs hitting it with a hammer to try to you know, tighten them up. Abba Balao from the Nigerian tradition doing divination, he's trying both of but at the same time he seems to have been performing the whole because he has signs on the trunk. And Abba Balao, the Cuban tradition, as I was telling you the difference, this is how they dress with this particular head and center. And the Cuban Balao, they might dress white like that and just, that's it. You know, and that's actually nice. Yeah. Dressing in white, a lot of them will not be like that. You'll see them in regular clothing. They might be, you know, with, with our, I don't know, hard rack of face shirt on, you know. By Cardia shirt and, and jeans, and, but they work. When I'm at home, I, I, I try not to look horrible for my clients, but I'm in jeans and you know, whatever, I just work for my division. And not all Nigerians will dress like that. I've seen pictures of Popola himself without a shirt on, performing a bowl in his compound in Nigeria. So, you know, Nigeria is a hot place too, so I'm sure they, they sometimes take off their, their shirt and just perform a bowl. For them, it's normal, it's part of life. I think actually on the human side, a lot of things that for them are just common. For example, the man is just simply because of the property, the only place they would sit, the royalty would sit to eat. On the Cuban side, it's almost obligatory that you have to have a straw mat before any type of ceremony in order for anything. People walk around with a straw mat. Oh, there's my madrina. They'll throw the straw mat out and throw themselves in front of the madrina, and then they'll pick up the straw mat. And they'll go to somebody else in the straw mat. So the straw mat becomes kind of like a religious icon. Whereas for the Nigerian, they probably, they probably look at go, I guess, but you know, they do use it. They don't do a bowl if there's no straw man, but for them it's not that it's not that serious, I guess. Let's just put it that way. But for the Cuban side, they always have to have a straw man for anything. You can put a risha to the floor, you don't put it on the floor. You have a straw man and you put the risha on the top of the straw man. The straw man represents that royal place because they're kings. The risha are kings for Okay. The controversial topics. I leave them to the end, but I like to discuss them because most of the misunderstood faith aspects are pretty much these two. These are the ones that are most objectionable to most people on the diaspora, in the Western country. Animal sacrifice, in order to understand one of these con controversial aspects, one has to understand why it is done. A lot of the faith is done under the concept of transmutation of energy. I'm going to try to speak in terms that are very intellectually Western, so we can understand why, why, why this happens. The Yoruba Ifa mindset believes that the blood of living creatures carries the most potent force of Ashe, which is the divine energy that permeates all living things. If you're getting flashbacks to the Star Wars Jedi philosophy, you're not alone. Luke has got a lot of the conceptions for the Jedi priesthood from Eastern and African religions. The whole idea that you know Yoda would say, you know, we're crude being, life energy before you, everything around us that binds us. That's a fact. That's a lot of the Asian religions as well. He was just taking it from there mixing it with some elements from Flash Gordon and made Star Wars, you know, that's, that's what happened. <laughs> so, when Olorishas or Babalaos are performing consecration ceremonies, the activation of religious icons that will house the energy of the Orisha must be activated with a direct transmutation of energy. And this is done through the ritual sacrifice of the blood of animals and through the activation that occurs through the ritual chants and songs. We don't just kill, there's a song for everything. Before I take out the knife, we're talking to God, Olorum the sun. Ogun Choro Choro, which is Ogun giving us permission to do. Ogun is the owner of the knife. Ogun, you're the one doing killing. Ogun's doing the killing. I'm not doing the killing. To clean myself from the karmic effect of killing an animal, living living being. I am not doing it. Ogun is doing it. Ogun Choro Choro, what's the response? Thank you. And then, whatever. There's a song and chants, and each of them have a meaning behind it. Everything is done in a very ritualistic manner. It's not just, you know, or, or you know, let's cut them hard. We try to aim for the, what's called the uh, carotid artery to try to eliminate the suffering of the animal and to do it quickly. We don't just you know continue cutting and, and, and harming the animal. So, so everything is done. And when people are trained, when you when you're at least in a very serious house and you don't do it well, the elders you know dame, 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 give it to they'll finish it and then they'll kind of you know give you a slap of the wrist. Mira, no la gai, so la gai, yeah, don't do that or don't do this to the to the to the goat. This isn't how you do it. You do it this way. Man. And in here, do this. You're trained to do things well, and you don't do your first sacrifice until you've seen a lot of it. Until 
your elders feel. In fact, the whole ceremony, the whole ceremony, it, it, there's too many details that are secret, but there's ceremonial aspects of some of our consecrations where there is a ceremonial moment where we're doing it together, now I'm going to let you go, you do it. Symbolizing that now you're free to do it on your own. There's, everything is very ritualistic in my faith. It's not done um, a wanton. So, there's a direct transportation of energy. All priests have energy within them. It is what allows us to be able to perform the somewhat miraculous, miraculous cleansing. It is not us, but rather the energy that is deposited in us by the Orishas as part of our consecration ceremonies. Hence the necessity for all Orishas and Babalas to be as clean, as pure as possible in their behaviors life. If you are impure in your life, you're attracting negative energy. You then can't do the, give the negative, you can give that negative energy to other people through the actual rituals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that does happen. There's, you know, I would not allow uh, una matanza for a yoko wash. If I'm there, if this guy comes in drunk, I'm all up and, ah, let's do this. But you can't do that. You know, this is, we're doing a ritualistic, religious setting. It's a sacred moment. In the same way, when it is divine divination that a particular orisha requires a blood sacrifice to resolve a client's problem, it is not that the orishas are vampiric. It is because the problem cannot be tackled without the required ashe. The Orisha receives the Ashe to then be able to transmute it into the astral work that will fix the client's problem. How is up to the Orisha. But if the ritual sacrifice where a bow is performed well, the client should see a resolution of their problem in some way. Animal sacrifice is not always necessary. In many cases, the offering of non-living items can be done. Fruits, candies, foods, uh, candles, liquors, a whole bunch of different things. Same things that we eat. A lot of the things, are usually things that, especially for us, it's, it's not things that we might eat, but for Nigerian Yoruba people, it is. The echo is the food of the day, it was a basic staple of, of cornmeal, cornmeal breads that they would eat. The Otin, they had their own uh, palm wine, but with time, the, uh, the Otin, what's it called? Otin I remember the term. It's an Otin that they call the Otin Jinbo, that's a term for it. It basically means the rum or the, or the or the liquor of the Europeans, of the white man, which was gin. So that's what we use most of the time. I try to use gin as much as possible. If you do not have gin, aguardiente is fine, white rum is fine, any type of liquor, hard liquor. Okay. So, uh, where am I? The most important sacrifice, however, is not material, it is behavior. If a person does not listen to the counsel of the oration, when it tells them to not talk too much, Thing. or not be risky in their sexual lifestyles or to avoid going out at night or for whatever reason no amount of ebo can protect the person from the consequences of not heeding the advice therefore behavioral modifications must accompany the ebo as well when performed animal sacrifice is done quickly and in the way least harming to the animal and conscientious priests are careful to care for the animal before the sacrifice is done like with any faith, there are priests who follow the rules, and then there's others who bring about this honor to the faith. A lot. And this is a constant struggle for many of us. Some of us get in trouble because we speak up. Why are you going to ask Don't do that. Why are you doing this? I can't, you know what? I can't be here. Get the button on. I can't be with these people. These people are being street hustled. I, 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 I don't deal with this. There's many times I've left on board for that reason. I can't be with these people. Because not every Baba Lao comes from the back. When I came, I had a particular, very blessed, abundant background. I grew up here in Amherst, Massachusetts. I got a good education, I went to college. Not every Baba Lama has university of college uh, education. They come from a different life and you know they're a little bit more rough around their edges. And sometimes I can't deal with with you know the associated negative habits that sometimes come with that. Some can, some can't. You know, I have friends who are just travel both worlds pretty well. Okay, so the other aspect is witchcraft, Ruheri. Everyone's favorite topic. First thing to know about Ruheria is that it's a simply a function of sympathetic magic. What one does in an act of witchcraft has to have elements of nature that relate to one to what one does to the other person. So you guys saw, uh, I mean, you guys see a lot of movies, Indiana Jones, Temple of Doom, that scene with kids, you know, stabbing the little doll, very little doll style, and whatever it's done to a doll, he's affecting it. It's essentially the same. You, can, you see this in Pablo, you see this in Ipa, you see this in Buddha, you see this in, in, in all, pretty much all the African traditional religions. But instead of for consecration purposes, it is done to affect someone, to accelerate negative situations in their life, sicken them, or even possibly promote them. However, witchcraft cannot be done wantonly and without consequences. 
is a very important. The spells work because the orisha approve of it and transmute the energy of the spell into material realization. A trained priest knows how to divine with, uh, with the orisha to ask if he or she is permitted to ask to cast a spell usually in defense of themselves or in an offensive manner. And also have to do a cleansing ceremony. What was the cleansing ceremony is to reduce the karmic blowback for having harmed another human being. Because that person, everybody here has an orisha. Whether you know it or not, you might be a child of Shun, you might be a child of Yemaya, you might have a Watala. And if I attack you, who's going to go after me? Or Watala, or Yemaya, or I'm going to get it from them. So if I did not ask permission and I have no reasons to be doing this, it can be very it can affect me. It's not smart to do it, in my opinion. It is not advisable to do so because one will feel negative occurrences in one's life as well, blowback. And if it is done, it is done only with the support of the Orisha and after cleaning oneself. Plus, it costs money. One has to offer an animal sacrifice and other ingredients. And, you know, these these battles, you know, what do you call it? Um, these battles are extremely expensive. If I throw it to somebody else and they are competent diviner, they're going to clean themselves. It's going to bounce back to me. The bolt right automatically is a rebound back to me. I have to do it both to clean myself, to bounce it back to them, and then they'll attack with something else. They throw again with a swine. They'll go in their house, they put the pulva, they call it the pulva. Fuava! Bam! I'm not feeling, I'm not good, I'm feeling not too good. Like, rumi la ego aquí. Tipo de enda. O rumbo de co. El bo. Back to the person. Who's going to be the winner? Whoever's got more money to spend on the animals. And, and had time to do it. And there's been witchcraft work where nobody wins. Both people are extremely effective. One dies and the other one, you know, got paralyzed. Great, who won in that? This happens all the time. Whether it's it's an unspoken a a aspect of the religion, but you know, there's there's stories of some of the great Babalaos in Cuba who lived their life launching witchcraft things at each other for jealousies. You know, and, and, and everything in this faith is in, in all the faiths, really. This is not only Ifa. All the faiths in the world in some way or another have an ability to be able to use this energy. Uh, we, we know about the Druids, we know about uh, weekends. I don't like to malign weekends because they're a very uh, peaceful and, uh, and nature-based religion. It's wrong to do that, but if they want to, sure they can. Same thing with Hulu, but it's like ours. They're not negative religions, they're not bad, but if you really want to mess with somebody, you mess with Marie Laveau and you were going to get it. Marie Laveau was a, you know, a peaceful little girl at the time. Same thing with Mamon Montserrat, the Feminita Gomez. You know, if, if Marie Laveau in New Orleans and Mamon Sarate they were going at it, they were going to go at it for a long time. They were both very strong witchcraft practitioners, they knew their stuff. From different traditions, but it's usually similar the same. If I notice a follow of uh, witchcraft, I'll see similar um, elements in my own faith. It'll look like something I've done with all of them. Wow, okay, we do something similar to those We see the similarity. Why? Because they come from the same region. It's come from Africa. They're, they're, they're related to the same natural world. They were, they're going to use the same elements, the same plants same text uh, with laws, the same type of things. Brujeria is not a smart policy, like I said, because they keep going back and forth, and the loser <coughs> usually ends up really affected. Lose loss of job, fight with contacts, sickness, losing one's home, etc. The last thing I will say is that it is very real. All pagan or animist faiths have some way to cast spells, and they can have tangible effects and consequences. One should not believe that one, because one is a believer in Jesus Christ, or I believe in Allah, and he's all above all this other, you know, dark, lower religions, that I'm not going to be affected. I've seen my share of Christians suffer life-altering consequences because of the actions of a very well-planned spell. I don't take it lightly. I try not to make a lot of enemies in this faith, because if I make fun of a, you know, a Catholic priest, well, you know, I might say, you know, God, may God bless you, and that's it, that'll be the end of it that day. But if I mess with a, a bottle of my own guy, and he really didn't like what I said, or I embarrassed him from his wife, well, he's going to remember me. And he's going back home. And he's got a caldero, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, in, a, in a week, I'm going to be divining, and I'm going to be feeling a little bit sick and having a to una toy. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Yeah, he got home. He remembered me, you know? So this happens. It does happen. However, you shouldn't believe that everything in life is witchcraft. But if one suspects, it is as simple as going to a babala and receiving a reading to ascertain the details. A reading is our diagnosis. That's all it is. You're going to a doctor. A babala is a spiritual doctor. We should be. We should not be attacking. If we're a doctor, we shouldn't be attacking people. But you ascertain, oh man, like my friend, you were attacked, you do a particular vote, and you cleanse. And that's it. You leave it there. You let God take its course. There's a divine justice to everything else. It's not that we can just keep going at it without consequences. Sure. 
I'll let you clean yourself, and sure, I'll let you attack him, but you're going to feel it later. You don't know it now, but in about four months, you're going to have a paralysis, or in four months, you're going to have an accident. And that's because you two will kind of wish to that person. Both of them are going to get into some way. There's a divine order to things. I do not practice with them. You can tell them, I don't do it to anybody. I never attack anybody. I have been the object of it. Various times, four or five times already. But I don't worry about that. I perform a bow. But Allah's belief, Obewori says that more than the Otui Father, there's no witchcraft. I just do my bow, and I said earlier that my life is doing well. So obviously I did something. Good. OK. I try to squeeze, and I know I talk a lot. I try to squeeze as much as I could into one presentation, but I don't want to let you guys go without allowing anybody else to ask any other questions. Anything else? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I know obviously the, the focus of this presentation is on Cuban Ifa, but um, <clears throat> I'm just curious if you know anything about any um, of the other traditions that show up in like the West Indies or in other parts of Latin America mm -hmm. um, that are rooted in African traditions. Not too much, just a few tidbits here and there. I know that I think in Trinidad they have one called Shango, which, mm -hmm. I, which I believe it's a mix of Catholic. Is it like a I've read a line, it's really online stuff. Mm -hmm. I could be totally wrong. A, very much like a mix of Christian stuff with, with, uh, with African traditions. Am I right? It's called Shango mm -hmm. Baptist. Yeah. Shango Baptist, something like that. So I remember that of all the particular faith traditions that are ATR, the African traditional religions, mm -hmm. it was the most that was very Christian involved. Esta una visión en Dominican Republic, which is basically Buddha on the on the on the Dominican side. I mean, um, and Dominicans in many ways like to like to sometimes say that they're they're not black or something. No, yo soy de Indio, yo soy de Guinea. Yes, you are. They were they were they were slaves that arrived in your country. It was the same people. Just because there's a line of demarcation here doesn't mean that the Buddha and that the font that the Arara didn't fall in your island too. Of course they did. The Spanish brought you all over. If you were if you were from any of those regions of West Africa, you arrived. Uh, either the Portuguese got you, or the Dutch got you, or the Spanish got you, and you made it all the way over here. There's a funny joke that this guy was in the comedian, um, Paul Mooney says that uh, the Caribbean, the Caribbean, yeah, these are the Caribbean African African people from the Caribbean feel themselves more important than African Americans just because they got dropped off first. <laughs> so he makes that joke. He basically, he's putting, he's bringing them down to, to cutting them to the size. You know? but we're all the same. He's pretty aware. And at the end of the day, they did. A very obvious thing. You want to mention that this, but this, the African traditions, whether they be from Bhutan or Tha, are really actually old, 10, 15,000 years old. Right. So when people say to me, you know, well, Christian, I said, you know, you all look kind of young. Right. 2,000 years is not a lot of time. I mean, look at Buddhism, look at, I mean, all of the, you know, the indigenous Native American, all of them are older. Islam is, is younger than Christianity by a little bit and what have you. And it's just interesting because the things that we always refer to Greek stuff, that came, they got that stuff. Yeah, they got it. The, yeah, they, the mystery from the They from got the it from all of the other traditionalist religions, that's where they came from. Some have maybe, uh, they're doing some research on them. I've read one or two books on the subject, I'm not 100% of this yet, but I can see some relationships with it. Some have argued that that uh, a lot of the big practices from Ifa come from the Egyptian mysteries, that you know, mythologically speaking, this is mythology. Orumira was, was essentially, Jesus Christ was a prophet too of, this, of the mysteries, that you know that what happened between Jesus Christ between the moment he was five or six years old in the temple, and telling him all these things, and then also he started to be a carpenter. What happened in between? The idea that he became that he went to Egypt and he had been trained just like Moses had been a, a trained comedic a priest, etc. I mean, it, there's a there's at least a least historical basis to that because if you were in the royal family, you would have been a prince of Egypt at the time. You certainly would have gotten inculcated in the, in the mysteries. You would have been initiated, and you would have had trained priests training you. you. Moses lived all his life as, a, as an Egyptian, basically. And, and, and not just a regular Egyptian, he was an Egyptian prince. He was Pharaoh's son, you know, that type of thing. So there's been arguments that maybe some of the traditions from Ifa, the religious theology, could come from the Egyptian practices. And we know that the Greek and the Roman, uh, mm -hmm. that we know for sure, that the Greek and Roman, uh, a lot of the ideas, the medicine, a lot of the ideas for theologies came from the Egyptians. They sacked and raped, you know, well, through all the, what do you call it, the, um, the libraries of Egypt. I don't know if it's Alexander, right? They did all this, they, 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 so they took all that information back to Greece and Rome, and now it's, it's ours. Mm -hmm. Which, it's, like, it's ours from white civilization, what it's, it's which, which they weren't, because if you take a look at any person from Greece and mm -hmm. uh, from Egypt, they certainly are not, you know, if you've ever seen the pictures of Jesus Christ, at least the ones that they, 
they've done from his recreation, etc. You don't doesn't look like you know a uh, guy from Sweden. Who was it? So another comedian said that he's not from Sweden. I think it was Paul Mooney too. I love Paul Mooney. <laughs> I love his comedy. But yeah, the one thing we do know for sure, Ifa divination, the idea of fan writing, that doesn't come from either Ifa or Nigeria, that comes from the north, that comes from the Maghreb. The Arabs over there, they had their own method of sand writing with a stick, so the idea of sand writing wasn't theirs. And that actually has been researched and explained. Leon and Glamis did a lot of that, uh, uh, of that research and wrote it down in some of his books. You know, he even do the, I think he did some of the research, he also compiled some other information from other research. But the idea of writing in the sand, that was an idea that came out the year. And actually, in the, at least in the Cuban Ifa corpus, in Obe Otura, uh, Obe the story of the Opelis birth is told that the, the Opele came from Abyssinia. So even in our own uh, corpus, there's, there's, there's few remnants of, uh, of relationship with the idea that the items of the religion didn't necessarily come from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It wasn't Nigeria, it was Ethiopia. Okay. So there's aspects of that. Otura Meli, Adifa Fuma in Malay. It's, a, it's an Obdu that speaks a lot about the Muslim tradition. In Nigeria land and uh, Yoruba land and in Cuba, whenever Otura Meji falls, it's, you know, it's an Otu that has to do with Islam a lot. Because Ifa has to have a space for everything in some way. It has to be relevant in some way. You know. It doesn't have to be perfect. It won't say anything else much for itself as the Otu of the Islamic people because it's a lot more limited. The Cuban information and in some things is a little bit more limited than, than some of the verses that you can find in Nigeria now. Because it was lost through the, through the slave, uh, some things were lost. They don't want to admit that, okay? Some of the priorista don't like to admit that sometimes. But yeah, of course things were lost, you know? The language was lost in many ways. We keep certain chants and stuff like that, but we can't speak. I can't speak of the rules or anything. Yes? But that, that saying that you can't speak Yoruba is it, it, sometimes I, it frustrates me when we, when we talk about Cuban Ifa, right? Because when I saw the title, I had to come for that. But growing up, you know, I mean, my children are third generation in this tradition. My mother's right here, she's got 26, I got 12 years. My husband has 17. But the idea that, the, the, the part of it is, is that there's this philosophy of santeros, right? There's this philosophy of the Cuban tradition. I, understand, I call myself Yoruba Lukumi, mm -hmm. which means that I speak Yoruba. It might be a little bit older Yoruba because it's a Yoruba, but but what I say, I don't say Mayuba, I say Majuba, right? So mm -hmm. I s am speaking in the language of the Yoruba people. Mm -hmm. Part of the disconnect for me sometimes is that as a younger person, I hope that at some point we can get into a conversation where sometimes we acknowledge that there are folks who are not of, of Spanish speaking origin mm. that have been practicing this oh, religion yeah. for 40 years. I forgot to mention, this has been big here in the United States. And so, and we come from the tradition of black nationalists who didn't need to become Islamic. Oh yeah. We did not mm. want Christianity. But I just want to put out there, imagine what it's like to grow up as an African American who's not Christian, mm. who's not Muslim, but black nationalist, mm -hmm. and then you don't speak Spanish. Well, I mean, I do, but I'm saying, you know, you don't speak Spanish, so, so you're this you're this marginalized person. So if I walk into a room, and I mean, if anybody knows me on this campus, I wear white all the time. I, you can't work in academia and not wear white. You know what I'm saying? And when I wear white, people go, oh, there must be a deep meaning. Like, because everybody knows around me, if I wear white to a meeting, I'm reflecting all the crazy that you're throwing at me. But also, the idea is walking around and walking through you know, these spaces, I don't necessarily, as a younger priest, I don't necessarily, everybody doesn't know. I mean, you can see that I have this one, mm -hmm. but I'm not really, me either. I'm not representing. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have the decades out there. This is the, the first time I wear this in like months because so, at work, I go, I go with just this. Yeah. I, I don't I don't wear because I don't want I, I work in a place unfortunately where most of the I have at least five or six of the co-workers I work with social work I'm a social worker mm -hmm. so I work mm -hmm. in a room filled with cubicles and, you know most of them are really nice people but six or seven that are Pentecostal Christian girls from Springfield mm -hmm. this of all the groups that could possibly be 
Pentecostals are particularly hateful with my faith. Yeah. So therefore, I don't want anybody to know my faith practice yeah. at work. I, and yet they know. do so many things that we do. Right. Yeah. You know, they will make, they most a lot of times they wear white to funerals because they know. And, uh -huh. and they do they do the music and the drums. And I mean, I said, you know how close to, you know what you really are? It's an African that's turned into a Christian. Yeah. The idea of white clothing and, is, and there's, is and there's a theory also that slavery was happening so that the religion would be saved mm -hmm. in a massive way. And when we go yeah. to Brazil, to Bahia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We sing, like they said to me last time, it was like 2012, they said, sing for Babalu Aie. How do you sing? And so we sang a song, and they were all excited, and all their reached sort of coming down like crazy. And I was like, what have we done? But, but it's the same song. It's yeah. just sung with a slightly different flair. Yeah. And isn't that amazing? It's the same song. We, we have, Yoruba is very non-changing. Mm -hmm. And people who are honest who are Yoruba Nigerians, they say, you speak Yoruba American. Because that's just another dialect of Yoruba. That's true, and, and that's another thing I was talking at the beginning before we even started the uh, the presentation that the actual Yoruba language, at least, because there's a lot of peers. There's peers on both sides. This is there's there's a there's um authenticity battles all the time. And usually, usually on this side, I find that that it's a light skin American and European. Uh, new converts to traditional lineages that get really furious on this. I don't, you, you're right that there's different communities, African Americans, in particular from black nationalism, looking for that Pan, -Amer Pan African relationship, identity, researching for the roots and, and trying to dispel their, you know, I, I'd like to say shackles, but the, yeah. the bonds of Christianity that they've had for many years. Some people did it like Malcolm X did, which was, you know, he found a relationship to Islam. Mm -hmm. But it's essentially the same thing, that search for, I'm no longer Malcolm Lou. I'm Malcolm X and then he was El Haj, El Haj, et cetera. That, that search for, 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 uh, for identity, you see a lot with African-American practitioners. And some of them go the way of the, of Cuban economy, because it's what's most accessible to them here. They're in New York and Miami, Philadelphia. The line is or out of Cuba, directly out of Cuba. If you get lucky enough to go, because some people can't. Pancho Mora. Pancho Mora. Ah, yeah, Pancho Mora. Yeah, wow. Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, Pancho Mora was one of the first. Well, Harjuri Quinones was the first African American yeah. initiated in America. That's true. Pancho Mora was one of the elder mm -hmm. Babalaos, uh, the first Babalaos, the first Babalaos in New York mm -hmm. to come out to this area. So mm -hmm. uh, some people go from our lineage, and then there's a lot of people who are who feel somehow, some way that, yeah, you guys are close to the, to the purify, but you're not there yet. So I'm gonna go to the real source. I'm gonna go to Elife, and I'm gonna initiate for the, and some, I respect a few, I have two or three friends who are, uh, who I'm really impressed, I can't beat them on the memorization of Eshifa, they're really good, and, and they've learned the language. They can yeah. speak Yoruba, they can speak it over there with people. Yeah. I can, I can run hungry or something, I need onion. Or me too, you know, something. I need water. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got, you know? It's 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 that's all I could probably say, but there's people can speak it, but and but they're really students. They are real students of their faith tradition, mm -hmm. and they really know what they're talking about. And the more they study their faith, the more they respect ours. They don't they don't have a problem with you. you they don't ever go. Renee, you're not a blah, blah, blah. When they see me, Boru boy, yeah. And when I see them, Aburu boy. We had the same boy. thing with Brazilians too. That that. They, they, they gave us tremendous respect. It's, it's usually the yeah. ones that are very ignorant, usually young, zealous, overzealous initiates, mm -hmm. which you know have just. Two years ago, we just got initiated, and they want to fight the, the battles for the lineage. And oh, you Cuban babalaos, you're so arrogant, and I hate you. Blah, blah, blah. And so they get into all the issues. I don't. I'm, I just would like to have more education on the subject. I part from the, the knowledge that I don't know almost nothing about this. Even though you might see me as I as speaking a lot about it, I know almost nothing about this. There's people who know way more than this, and I'll probably never know as much as them because the conditions of my life don't really lead me to be searching all the time. I'm not in Cuba all the time. I'm not in Nigeria all the time. These people do this all their lives. There's no way I'm going to be able to match uh, a Bernardo Roja in Cuba. I'm not going to match a Popola or a Bimbola over there. They, they, you know, this is their life. My life is music. But in some way or another, Orumina wanted me to be his priest. And my mission is here. 
And Obeyat actually speaks that he was the Odu that spread Ifa in the land of Benin before Ifa didn't even exist there. This is interpreted. I'm living in New England, in an area <laughs> where there is no Ifa. I mean, very little Ifa. There's one Mamalao in Springfield who I know. Everybody else up to maybe in New Britain or maybe up in Bridgeport, closer to New York. They're, from this night on, they're very dragons, as, as the maps used to say. There's no Ifa. And maybe that's my point. Maybe that's, that's, that's my purpose. Here. So I have um, two uh, questions. Um, so yeah, so I'm if still you could, I'm so tired. yeah, um, thank you first of all. Um, and if you could speak a little bit more, because in the last 15 years, as I was telling you before, um, in the last 15 years in Cuba, there have been women who have been initiating into Ifa, and one of those on um, Babalas was Vito Bentacu, right? Um, and so um, I'm interested just in like your thoughts on that. Like, what do you think? I don't know what your meaning is, whether it's straight out of Cuba or like. Uh, it's straight, it okay, is. Okay, so I'm just wondering what your elders may have already told you about that. And the other thing is, there's this phenomenon with this commercialization of this sacred science, as I like to call it, in which we have um, this term this coined term Santurismo, right, um, which in Cuba is very, very prominent, in which a lot of people, um, because this culture, the Afro-Cuban culture specifically in terms of Cuba, has been folklorized a lot, you have like um, a lot of people who just like initiate tourists, right, you know, who like advertise. Yeah, the religious tourism. Practice, exactly. Yeah. And so um, within that, you, then you get a lot of Europeans also initiated into the practice. And so um, I'm also wondering um, where your thoughts are on white people initiating into this practice. Ah, uh, good question. They had, uh, I'm gonna answer that one first and then I'll go to the young mm -hmm. one. There was a really good discussion on Solak Bale Popola's uh, Facebook page about that. He usually loves to throw these really controversial topics out there, which, which both the Nigerian lineage and Cuban Bible allows us to, you know, we all get angry and okay. often puff about it. And one of them was that. Uh, uh, now I remember the word Ojimbo. Oh, 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 I was called that. I was well, called that. I was called that. I was called, oh, you Ojimbo. Oh, I had to look at it. What's Ojimbo? Oh, it means the white man. It's the, the European. The Ojimbo. Oh, you know, that's no, what I was, when I was thinking mean, about the Ojimbo. Oh, but it can also mean that you're not, you're, you're not Yoruba. Yoruba. Yeah. Right. I mean, it doesn't have to mean that you're white. You're just not Ojimbo. It's, it's like it's the stranger. Like person outside. Yuma. Yuma. Yeah. Yuma. So exactly. Yeah. But it, but in the way that they spoke, this particular person spoke it is you can't understand it. It was it was like I said, an overzealous initiate you know, she's uh, she was a young uh, priestess, I think of uh, and she was discussing some issue on the forum and I was explaining something there along with some of the other priests on, on an issue. And she was essentially I guess she ship on the shoulder. Oh how could you know? You're light skinned, you're not from you know you're not from, oh, this is not your culture. Yeah. You don't know about this. And you know, linguistically wise, I might not know, but I'm not saying anything wrong. I, if you think I'm wrong, do you want me to point to Ayosan or Wanda Bibola? It's in their books, it's right there, you can read it. You know, Idowu wrote about this, and Olutumari, Popola wrote about this. So I always try to, a very academic training, that's the human training there. <laughs> uh, I'll prove it to you. If you don't believe me, I'll bring you the documents, and it won't be a Cuban document, because Cuban documents are worth crap to somebody's 